guys, welcome back to my Bob's Burgers cooking series. A couple disclaimers before we begin. As I'm sure you could hear, I am actually in the middle of a storm. It's just been a very dark and rainy day all day today, and there's nothing I can do about that. I just hope it doesn't negatively impact the quality of this video too, too much. And I also have a couple graveyard vomit things to film today, and by a couple I mean like seven, and I didn't want to put on makeup or eyebrows or anything prematurely to cut in, into any of that time. Uh, taking it off and starting back over to full makeup videos. So this is what we're working with Red eyes and all today. We're gonna be making the six scallion dollar man burger This is from season 5 episode 15 adventures in chinchilla sitting ginger stuffed burger is slathered in tamari soaked scallions and served on a bed of steamed bok choy This burger is better stronger and faster from the plate to your mouth makes two burgers Ingredients are 1 fourth cup thinly sliced scallions, 1 third cup coconut oil, 1 teaspoon sesame oil, 2 tablespoons of soy sauce, 1 head bok choy, 2 thirds pound ground beef, 1 half teaspoon grated fresh ginger, 1 tablespoon honey, and 2 buns. Now, uh, just like last time, I'm actually only going to make one burger. I do have my scallions marinating in the soy sauce, which is actually tamari because I do make these vegan and gluten free, and the oil. This has been sitting in here for probably two hours now. Um, it's been in the fridge, I take it out. For the bok choy, I actually have one little head of baby bok choy in here. This was fresh and then I froze it. So in order to steam it, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to this and pop it in the microwave. For the meat, we got some Impossible Burgers. Super fancy, they're actually thawing in the sink right now in some hot water but it's just the two serving package. I got this from Walmart. And instead of honey, I am using agave and then pretty much everything else is the same. I do want to talk about the buns I got. So last time I mentioned that I couldn't find any buns and I wanted to get the Be Free brand buns. Uh, when I was at Walmart getting the Impossible Meat, I found this. This is like a gluten-free ciabatta bread and there's four of them. They're a little bit bigger than the Be Free ones, so that's even better. They are dairy-free, wheat-free, egg-free, and I read the ingredients, the only thing that it has that is possible origin is soy. So I'm just going to slice and toast these uh, just like I did with the other one, and I probably will do every time. All right, and for my side of fries today, I'm actually going to be doing some Korean braised potatoes. I think that that will go better with this burger. So I just had one rest of potato, I already peeled it, and then I cut it into little-ish cubes here. Let me take you down to the stove. All right, hopefully this is a better angle than the last one. I'm gonna start on the potatoes. I'm just gonna fill this uh, saucepan with a little bit of water. I'm gonna put the potatoes in. Put that on about medium high heat, cover it, and forget about it for a while. So this is our little frozen head of baby bok choy. If you have gotten fresh, then of course you could just follow the instructions in the book here, which is just put in a steam basket and cook. But for me, I buy a lot of veggies fresh, and then if I think that I'm not going to be using them within the week, then I will go ahead and freeze them and then use them for other recipes after I've thawed them out or whatever I need to do with them. So this is exactly that situation. Um, but because it was fresh and not steamed before it was frozen, I'm going to add a little bit of water here, cover it with a lid, um, with just like a little bit of extra space poking out, and then I'm going to microwave it until it's soft. And these patties are pretty squishy now, so I'm going to say that they're sufficiently thawed out. So I'm going to take one of them out and put it in a bowl. The instructions say to add salt and pepper. And that this is where you're gonna add in your minced ginger. I've actually just got some squeezed ginger that I'm gonna add a little glob of. And smush. And I'm gonna form it back into a patty as best I can. I will say, I don't think that it's absolutely essential if you wanna do this recipe to get an impossible patty. I just got it because it said that it wanted uh, ginger mixed into it, but I think you could get essentially the same taste if you, if you mix the ginger into this marinade for the scallions. But I thought it would just be fun. Alright, this guy is done from the microwave. I'm just going to take it out and lay it on this cutting board. I'm going to cut the bottom off. And then these just need to kind of dry. So I have a clean kitchen towel here. 
gonna press some of that water off and then I'll transfer the rest to the top of it. All right, time to start cooking the patties. We're gonna do a little over medium heat with a smidgen of oil. Actually, that might be enough. Do you see the tiniest little dot in there? When peeling this, it's very oily, so I don't think it's gonna be a huge problem, but this is just in case I don't want any problem flipping it. I'm gonna let that heat up. I'm gonna check on my potatoes. Those are getting there. You'd like them to be easily pierceable with a fork. I'm gonna cut it in half with my bread knife. This is how it looks. If you're a connoisseur of gluten-free bread, it's nice and squishy and it's got a lot of air pockets in it. And I will just pre butter the inside. And for the butter, I just have standard old Earth Balance. It's probably the most accessible vegan butter, although I know that there's some like Smart Balance or Country Cock or something that have a version of margarine that is completely vegan as well. All right, so I'd say this is hot enough to put the patty in. All right, the potatoes are good to go, and I'm gonna go ahead and drain some of this liquid out. And I'm gonna lower the heat down to like medium low instead. And we're gonna throw in there a little agave, some sesame oil, a little more squeezy ginger, tamari, optional red pepper flakes, some garlic, that was a lot, oh well, and some sesame seeds. I'm just gonna mix that together really good with my rice paddle. Or the idea is that the stuff that's not touching the potatoes right now is gonna like thicken and kind of coagulate enough to create this really yummy sticky sauce. If it doesn't, you can add a little bit of cornstarch and water to it and that'll help. It'll still taste good though, no matter what the consistency ends up being. All right, I think the burger is ready to flip because it's looking kind of like gray brown on the side. There we go. That may be too much. Again, I don't know anything about cooking meat and this is like pretty much as close as I'm ever gonna get. Or at this time I'm gonna toast the bread on the sides. Share some pan space. I only have one pan. All right, I think the meat is done. And then I want us to go ahead and put this onion mixture in the pan with the agave. nice and toasted and we can start assembling let me get my fancy plate that i got just for these videos it is bottom bun bok choy burger scallions top bun and then potatoes on the side Very exciting, here it is. And I'm gonna cut it in half. All right, so there it is. Let's see. Look at that, focus. All right, time to try it. Do the potatoes first. You have to make this. You have to make it. This is so legit. This tastes like roni. This bun, this brand of bun, is super soft and fluffy and nice and it toasted super well and all these things go really good with each other. I was a little bit skeptical that all these flavors would taste good on a burger, but they really do. Definitely, definitely make this. And if you do, tag me. All right, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next burger recipe. Bye.